Cal Toronto. The show has an AL East matchup. It's the Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. So almost ready to get underway. And today on the hill, Kevin Gossman. And Singy, that may be his name, but the strikeout is his game. Well, Boog, I can tell you've been working on that one, but yes, you are right. You this guy strike out for nine, over 11. I mean, that's just getting it done. There are a lot of strikeouts in that other lineup, and when you look at what he's able to do, man, it's going to be a fun one to watch today. Cedric Mullins at the plate now. That's ball one. And the 1-0. That misses off the outside edge. Just missed. That one finds the zone. Three balls and a strike. And fires in a fastball at 95. We got full count. That one 95 to finish him off. Just a mid-90s challenge fastball right there. Not much to it. And I'm sure he'd love another swing at it because it was in a very hittable location. Those are the swings where you can sometimes start to question yourself as a hitter and say, how did I miss that? But you know what happens? The 1-0. -oh. And a good eye there. Kevin Gosman hails from Colorado, but he played his college ball at LSU. He was the fourth overall pick in the 2012 draft, made his debut at 22 years old in 2013, and he has gotten himself through a lot. One down, base is empty. In there for a strike at the top of the zone. Yeah, and coming through the minor leagues, he was expected to be the number one starter for the Baltimore Orioles and never quite lived up to that billing, but continued to fight, ups and downs, persevered, and after two free agent deals, he finally became an all-star. Swing and a pop-up in foul ground. He's got it, and there's two away. Batting third, the right fielder, Anthony, Anthony Santander at the plate. And the first pitch misses for ball one. And another ball. There's a strike. He normally does damage on that pitch in that location. Just a swing and a miss there. I don't think you want to throw it again, though. Two and one now. And a foul ball. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Lukes brings it in with a nice running grab. Orioles nothing. Blue Jays coming up. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back here at Rogers Center. And on the mound today, a guy who will give them innings. Dean Kremer. Chris, how about a scouting report? Well, no doubt about it. He's going to have to put together some consistently good performances in order to bring that ERA down. Now, he's got good stuff. He's just got to be able to have confidence, trusted, and really go after hitters, not nibble. Trusted his stuff Leading can up. have now, late life up. in miss barrels of bats. And now for the Jays, George Springer. Springer. The wide to kick the pitch. 
And that's in for a strike. Chris, one of the things that's really cool about George Springer's story is what he has overcome. As a kid, he had a lot of anxiety, and he had a stutter. And he's a guy now that speaks publicly and does so marvelously and is a great spokesperson for young people who struggle with stuttering. Yeah, the Stuttering Association for the Young, SAY is the acronym, and George Springer doing a great job representing that organization. That's a ball. Now a check swing, but he held up. Nice job to keep the hands back on that one. Out in front just a little bit. Close, but called a ball. And now three balls and a strike. Up the middle, dives, but it kicks off his glove. No throw, and he reaches safely. <laughs> Bobichette up to the dish. And that's in there for strike one. Rudder at first with no outs here. Next offering is in for a strike. Oh, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes. Even a good pitch early in the at bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0 2 count. In the dirt. Save! So a wild pitch allows the runner to advance. Well, obviously, that was nowhere near the strike zone by the time it got to the plate. And people at home watching are thinking, what's he swinging at? But I'll tell you, some of the break guys snap off these days is just devastating. It can be so tough to recognize where a pitch like that's going to end up. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. That pitch gets the corner. That's strike one. Runner at second here, one gone. And he grounds one back up the middle. Frazier on the first, in time. And Guerrero is set down. Up to the plate is Brandon Belt. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. First offering misses the mark. The pitch. Fly ball down the right field line. If it's fair, it's gone. And that is gone. Brandon Belt goes deep. And the Blue Jays have the lead now. It's 2-0. That's exactly the pitch he was looking for. Crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. And here is Matt Chapman. What a season it's been for him. He has supplied a lot of power and that average. He swings and misses at the first pitch. 0-1. Inside, just missed. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. Tracks it down for the out. And that is that. The Jays get a pair on this homer. It's now a 2-0 ball game. It's Major League Baseball on the show.
Back now in Toronto. All set for the start of the inning. Here's Ryan Mountcastle. Ryan well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Swing and a miss as he was late. Singing Ryan Mountcastle, a former first-round pick by the Orioles in 2015. Here's the thing that gets me, though. He owns his own karaoke machine. And can I tell you, I've never done karaoke in my life. Yeah, try it sometime. Singy, what's your go-to karaoke song? Yeah, probably some song that'll cost us too much to mention in this broadcast. Toss the belt. One out in the second. That is it. The second base is Adam Frazier. Here's Adam Frazier. Pitch in for a strike. 0 and 1. Looks like a really good fastball today. You can hear that catcher's mitt pop it. Looking forward to hearing a lot of that one in this one. Kicks and fires. Eight. And there's the strike. He doesn't seem to like the pitch up. Hasn't offered on either one of those pitches. 0 2 count now. I think the guy's going to climb the ladder out there. The 0 2. Runs it up to 96 to record the punch out. Well, I think that's a case of overthinking right there. He got three straight fastballs looking in the 0-2 count just to pour it back. And now it's Austin Hayes. Check swing. No appeal. And that is ball one. And that's outside. Edge of the zone, call the strike. Now two and one. Rolled over to third, and that's just foul. Here's a two two. On the ground, right side. Gathers and throws to first. Out number three. One, two, three, go the Orioles. They trail things here, two nothing. Back here at the ballpark, bottom Way half of inning number Toronto. two with the Merrifield up to the plate. Way. It's amazing we get a chance Way. to talk to a lot of opposing managers. This guy scares managers on the other team as much as anyone. And he gets to fly oh, beneath the radar with the other more recognizable names in this lineup. That's the third. Henderson over to oh. first in time. Leadoff man retired here in the second. Batting seven. The catcher. Alejandro. Alejandro Kirk next up for the Blue Jays. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Really good athlete, and many times we talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher as well, really quick feet. He's able to recognize the pitch, see the trajectory, and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop. Right back to him on the mound. Fires over to first. Two up, two down. Batting it. No left field here. Okay. Two outs, base is empty. Nathan Lutz, the next to hit. Next pitch is popped up. Frazier makes the catch. And that is that. Nothing across here this half. We played two full. Blue Jays two and the Orioles nothing.
And welcome back. New inning getting started. Here's the rookie third baseman, Gunnar Henderson. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. That one to first, and that's a fair ball. And it kicks off the base of the wall. Now he turns and heads for second. To the shortstop at second, but it pulls him off the base. Got a fastball, middle of the plate, jumped all over it. Absolutely smoked that ball. James McCann in now. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. That just misses. And yeah, that's ball one. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. Runner at second, nobody out. Next offering is in for a strike. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. That one in for a strike, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout, and there's one away. And now it's going to be Joseph Ortiz. Edge of the zone for a strike, and it's 0-1. Man at second. Good eye right there. One ball, one strike. And a one two. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Yeah, the right-hander deals. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's two away. So back-to-back -back strikeouts now. And they still haven't managed to do anything with the leadoff double. Yeah, Boog, and you just don't want to get careless here. You've done a really good job to get two outs after that leadoff double, as you mentioned. And just got to execute your pitches, and it's a non-issue. So the batting order turns over. Cedric Mullins, the next to hit for the Orioles. And the first pitch misses for ball one. And here it comes. And that's in there at the knees. And he chases that one. That's his second strikeout. And the Orioles leave one. They're still down. It's two zip. As we go to the last of the third. And now for the Jays, Kevin Kiermeyer. Chris, his skill set straight out of the mid-80s. Good contact, not much power, and he could run. He always uses the wheels to his advantage. His biggest challenge in this day and age is to not get caught up in trying to hit home runs because so many people are. In the air, left field. Fair ball. 
Just a blue bit behind third right okay. there, and that's a really tough play no for right a third right baseman or shortstop Go. to get to, and the same for the left fielder. So he just found a perfect place to drop that one in right there. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Here's George Springer, reached on an infield single his first time. Strike one. I think baseball's starting to understand that those guys are valuable like they once were. They need them in this game today. On the ground, could be two. To second, there's one. How about that double play? I think four, six, three double plays like that are way tougher than these guys make it look sometimes because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play, but right there, very well done. That's a ball. This batter has to understand his job is to get on base however he can. If he gets hit by a pitch, if he walks, maybe even singles. But you want to get the heart of the order up to the plate. They say you win. Bo Bichette, oh, second round pick, 2016, and a kid who comes from pretty good baseball family. His dad, Dante, played for California, Milwaukee, Colorado, Cincinnati, and Boston over 14 big league seasons, and Dante could swing it. Yeah, and you just get the sense in watching Bo that this guy, all he wants to do is win. A gamer goes hard and wants to lead that ball club to a championship. The next pitch misses, two and two. He wanted that fastball high and tight, looking for a strikeout, just didn't locate it very well. In the dirt. McCann fires to first. That completes the strikeout, and that'll do it. Back here at Rogers Center, out of the fourth, here's Adley Rutschman. Adley Rutschman. Gosman back to work. Yeah. There's a strike. Not what he's looking for there in the OO -O count. Looks like he wants the ball down in his own. Comes up empty on the swing. 0 oh, 2 now. And he hits a ground ball right side. Guerrero the toss to first. That's the first out in the top of the fourth. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And into the box for Baltimore. Anthony Santander. 0 for 1 so far. Ground ball right side. Guerrero gets it to first. And a couple of quick outs. Now bat the first base. Ryan Mountcastle. So now it's the four hole hitter, Ryan Mountcastle. 0 for 1, he grounded out in his first at bat. Fought off foul. A one down. And there's a breaking ball that drops in there. That front door slider is such a devastating pitch. You don't want to get beat by the inside fastball, so you cheat a little bit, and then by the time it gets there, it's out of the swing plate. Out towards left center. Luke's on the move to the gap. Puts the squeeze on that one, and that'll end the inning. Three up, three down for the Orioles. They trail it here, 2-0. Welcome back. Bottom of the fourth, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now. The second baseman. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he's made that proud so far in his career. Multiple all-star appearances. A guy who was born in Montreal way back when, 1999, when his dad was playing for the Expos. 
Yeah, and so much violence with that swing. Exit velocity is charged and very fun to watch. More play discipline than that. Foul ball. Singy, so, how about this, though? A little more than 400 games into his career, Vlad Jr. had the exact homer total and OBP as his dad. Way out front for strike two. The next offering misses. And the count's even at two. And the pitch. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. Riding to the plate. And yeah, there's ball four. Man, that's a tough one to take on the full count, but I guess he saw it really well. It's a really nice plate appearance. So up next for Toronto, Brandon Bell. He's one for one with a two-run homer his first time up. That smash towards center. And out number one on the grab. It was all over that fastball right there. I tell you what, if he gets under it just by a fraction of an inch or a little bit more, that's way back. Now it's up Matt Chapman. He's 0 for 1. Third baseman, Matt. Matt. Chapman. Strike 1. Here comes the 0-1. One. one and one. A little bit low. That's out to center field. Mullins settles under it. He's got it. And there's two away. The batter, number 15, designated hitter, Whit Merrifield. And next for Toronto, Whit Merrifield. Grounded out his first time up. there and it's 0 and 1. Well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70 percent. That's well above league average and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. Swing and a line drive curling foul down the right side. Here's the 0-2. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Righty delivers. Tried to check his swing there. Now it appealed to first, and he held back, according to Larry Bullard. Kicks and deals. Line drive, base hit right field. They stopped the lead runner at second. Now two on with two outs. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Alejandro Kirk getting ready to hit. First pitch not close. Chris Alejandro Kirk, stocky catcher, an all-star in 2022. This guy can hit. Yeah, he can, and really just surprised everyone coming onto the scene, doing such a great job that became an all-star with very little big league experience before that. Next Whoa, pitch misses, there. ball two. Good spot for the hitter, definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. First and second, two down. Ripped on a line to center. 
Mullins pulls it in on the run. Blue Jays leave a pair, but they're on top 2 nothing. Back now in Toronto. Top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Adam Frazier. Yeah, the right hander back to work. Check swing didn't go. One and oh. Bottom of the zone and a called strike. Next offering is outside. Next one misses three and one. Expect for that guy to come right at you with a fastball, something in the zone, because he does not want to allow the leadoff wall. Aye. And now it's filled up. Can't lose, fool. That one misses. So a leadoff walk. And now Austin Hayes grounded out his first time. Slapped foul. Next offering is down low. Well, with the amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt, a good secondary lead doesn't have to get away from the catcher. But if you're anticipating based off the trajectory, get yourself in the scoring position. The one two wouldn't chase that time. It's a good take. Got him swinging for the strikeout. Gassed it right by him. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. And next for the Orioles, Gunnar Henderson doubled in his first A.B. That misses. Ball one. Left-hand hitter waits. And a foul ball. Right-hander kicks deals. That one drifts inside. The punch out there. Two gone now. Now bad. Here is James McCann. His first McCann. in bat was a strikeout. This one popped up right side. Guerrero makes the grab. And that is the inning. So they've been held scoreless through five. Home half of the fifth coming up. Blue Jays two and the Orioles nothing. Bottom of the inning. Now Nathan Luke. No left fielder. On the mound, he had a little trouble back in the first, but it's been a different story the rest of the way. Really settled into this outing nicely. Right through there for a strike. Swing, and this one's bounced to the ground. McCann to first, 
And the leadoff hitter retired in the fifth. Now the center fielder, Kevin Kiermaier. Here's Kevin Kiermaier. One for one with a single so far. That one finds the corner, and that's strike one. This one ripped, but foul to the right. This guy's seen two change-ups in a row. Could be a little vulnerable for a fastball right here. The 0 2. That's foul off to the right side, keeps the AB going. In the air, left field. And it's caught for the out. The right fielder, number four. Back to the leadoff spot in the Blue Jays lineup. And it'll be George Springer to step to the plate. One for two. On the ground to third. And it gets by him. Around first, heading for two. The throw into second. The tag and they get him. So a sloppy play there, but it ends the inning. Top of the sixth inning, and into the box for Baltimore, Joseph Ortiz. And a pitch. Bounce to third, Chapman. Tosses to first. Lead off man retired in the sixth. Now at the center fielder, Cedric Mullins. And now the center fielder, Cedric Mullins, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. He's been going after these guys consistently, and as a result, he's been able to keep his pitch count low, throwing the ball very well right now. In there for strike one. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. He's got it. And there's two down. I always remember watching Johan Santana pitch, and when he was in his prime, you would see a lot of guys out in front, right-handers pulling that change up in the stands and then fouling the fastball the opposite field up into the stands. Rutschman hey. in the box again, takes a strike. Oh, and one. No ball, two strikes. Next one oh, off the plate inside, and that's ball one. Swings and misses, struck him out. Make it six shutout innings for him out there now. Two, three, four, due up in the home half of the sixth. Blue Jays two, and the Orioles nothing. Bottom of the six, and the batter will be the shortstop, Bo Bichette. shortstop. The wind and the pitch. And it's fouled away. Well, these Blue Jays, simply put, are producing a lot of quality swings. They've hit seven line drives already, and even though some of them have been for outs, there's nothing wrong with delivering consistent hard contact. That's almost always going to lead to positive results. Next All offering two. is downstairs. Two, one. And that one off the outside edge. In for a 
a strike. Now it's three and two. Bounce to the left side. Quips it to Mountcastle. And that's one out as they get the leadoff hitter in the sixth. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. will hit next. Vladdy, 24 years old, and he's won a silver slugger in the American League. And that one is in for a strike. Movement in the Orioles' bullpen. Tyler Wells is loosening up. This would be his first appearance for the club. Colon warming up as well. The pitch. And yeah, that's outside. That misses. And it's two and one. Two balls, one strike. And now it's filled up. Caught a break right there. Pretty good pitch on the outside corner. And that's ball four. Just missed his spot on the inside right there. Now bad. First base. Brandon Bell, who grew up in Texas, played his college ball at the University of Texas, and then went on to win. World Series with the Giants in 2012 and 2014. They called him the captain for a couple of years. Yeah, and I remember Bruce Bochy talking about Brandon Belt when he was just coming up to the big leagues and said he was a left-handed Buster Posey. Bell stands in here, takes ball one low. The next pitch misses two and oh. Kicks and fires. That one's spoiled and the count now two and one. There's a strike. And down on strikes he goes, and there's two down. Now Matt Chapman now at the plate. Matt. Matt Chapman. Swing and a miss. That's strike one. In the on-deck circle, you really want to use that opportunity to see some pitches and time up the fastball. Last thing you want to do is miss a good, hittable fastball early in the count. And that one fouled off. Oh, and two now. And there's the ball. Two strikes. One, two now. Good eye right there. On the ground to the left. Has some trouble with it. To first, and he beats it. Everyone's safe. You can't do much better than that on a pitch that far outside of the strike zone. Got in the chase on the two-strike count, but he wasn't fooled. He hit that ball really well. Now the Orioles manager is out of the dugout, and he'll make a move to the pen. Dean Kremer out of the game, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. So a new arm out of the bullpen for the Orioles, Tyler Wells. Should be a good first matchup for him here. He's been doing a great job against right-handed bats so far this season. 
They've had a lot of trouble squaring him up. Now it's the Toronto designated hitter, Whit Merrifield. Beautiful swing in his last at bat, opposite field knock. There's a swing and a miss. Oh, and one. Two outs, couple of base runners at first and second. Oh, and two as he waves at that one. In the air, right side. He's got it. And that is out number three. Nice work from the Baltimore pen there. We're through six full. Blue Jays two and the Orioles nothing. Back here at the ballpark, top of inning number seven. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Anthony Santander. And a pitch. And ball one to the right fielder. That one misses. And it's 2-0. and oh. Bullpen activity starting up now. Nate Pearson up and loosening in the pen. Garcia, the hard-throwing right-hander, up as well. Popped up, foul territory behind the plate. Kirk calls it in, and there's one away. The first base is number six, Ryan Mountcastle. So digging in, Ryan Mountcastle. Swing and a miss. Going one. one. Not sure if he could be in more of a groove. Looks really relaxed. He's retired seven straight. This guy's feeling it right now. And fouled off. Well, he missed a hittable off-speed pitch right there. Not sure exactly with the timing. Sometimes you get a backup breaking ball. You're expecting it to make its move at the end. It never does. And you're tied up. Bichette oh. whips it to first. And two away to start the seven. Now bad. The, the second base. base. Adam. Adam. Frazier. Now it's the second baseman, Adam Frazier. That one fouled off. Two down, nobody on. High fly ball out at the left center field. Lukes makes the catch inning over. Nothing doing this time around for the O's, and they're down to nothing. It's time for the traditional seventh inning stretch. Back here at Rogers Center, bottom of the seventh, and now here is Alejandro Kirk. The pitch. There's a strike. Well, that's really the money spot. Down and away, if you can locate that consistently, it's going to be real tough for guys to square that up. That's what you'd love to see relievers do coming out of that bullpen. The pitch. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And one gone. Just couldn't catch up on the low 90s fastball right there. And that's a result of a good job of changing speeds. Off speed pitch on the one before, then sped him up. Pitchers that don't throw real hard have to rely on location and mix it up to speeds. That wasn't the best location with the fastball, but clearly that wasn't the pitch he was looking for at the plate either. Luke's nope, lays there. off down low as he digs in for the third time. Swing and that ball smashed on a line. Pulls it in for the out. Man, that's one of those at bats where you have to remind yourself yeah, yeah, it's yeah. about the process. He did everything right, yeah, right yeah. there. Nothing to show for Here it. But in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at bat. K 
Kiermaier. Nope. The next to hit takes outside. Next pitch no. inside. Now 2-0. Two, oh. two outs. Pitch no misses. Rescue. Three balls, no strikes. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. And it's Ooh. ball four. He missed down low. Maybe a little loss of focus on the mound right there. Pretty much gifted him first now base with a quick right free right pass. Joel. And the batter is George Springer. Springer. That one's in there on one. Well, if he's going to steal second, you want him to go early in the count. That way he's not a distraction to the hitter at the plate. Go ahead and get it out of the way so the hitter can focus on the pitch. The 0-2. That one ripped. And it's gone! George Springer takes it deep, and they add on. It's 4-0. He absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer. And you can see that's what he expects of himself. At bat after at bat, he's that confident. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. Bobachek gets a chance to hit. That's a little bit low. Next offering misses, and the count is 2-0. Oh. Two balls, one strike. The wind of the pitch. Now a pop-up on the infield. Henderson drifts towards it and puts the squeeze on that. And the inning is over. It's a beautiful Springer Dinger here. It's now a 4 nothing ball game. And welcome back. Now the left fielder, Austin Hayes. Austin Hayes. The pitch. Gosman still out there to pitch the eighth and working with a big lead. He's been excellent, really on his game in this one. And at this point, he wants to finish what he started. That one not close. It's a ball and two strikes. Is there a debate to be had about shutting him down, maybe to preserve some bullets given the score? Absolutely. When you consider yeah. over the course of a long season, guys putting a lot of stress on that elbow, on that shoulder, but you also have to pry the ball out of a hand of a guy like this because he's so competitive. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Good job to fight that one off. And the righty deals. And now the count filled up three and two. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Well, he's starting to look a little gassed to me, and we'll see if they go to the bullpen in this spot or not. Gunner Henderson, the next to hit for the Orioles. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. First offering misses the mark. Double barreled action in the bullpen. Anthony Bass, the hard throwing righty, is up and loosening. Swanson getting cranked up as well. Nobody out. Runner at first. There's the strike. 
ball, one strike. That's oh, inside. Okay. Now two balls and a strike. Left hand batter waits. Ball, that's low. Here's an opportunity to do some damage and perhaps unlock this offense. 3 1 count. Be ready to turn on a fastball. The pitch. 3 2 now. Three ball, two strikes. And ball four to a board. Well, this could be the start of something. They haven't found a way to score yet, but now, now's their chance to change that. So next to hit for Baltimore, James McCann. Pitch misses inside, and it's one to know. No outs, runners at first and second. On the inside corner for a strike. Man, this has been impressive. Just now getting to 100 pitches as we start this eighth inning. He's given them a lot of length, and we'll see just how much longer they'll let him go. And one and two. Well, he went inside a couple of times, and now outside, hitter's not exactly sure where to look for this next pitch. And that one hit to first. Knocks it down. The throw is still in time. He keeps his composure, and they get the out. So up next, Joseph Ortiz. Hey. And that's in there for strike one. Two on, one out. Very high with that one. One ball, one strike. And delivers outside. It's a big opportunity right here, but I love the way he's slowing the game down. He's shrinking his zone, making sure he gets the pitch that he wants to hit. Two and one now, two aboard. Got the back going too soon at strike two. Clearly all in on the fastball right there, but it was a changeup. Bottom just fell out of it. He's going to have to make an adjustment. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a slow roller. Rolls across the diamond. There for the out. Runner scores from third. Here comes the skipper out of the dugout, and he's ready to make the move. Kevin Gosman makes way, and he was a tough nut to crack. Pretty stingy from start to finish. Back with the new arm after a quick break. Now it's Jordan Romano out of the bullpen. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. Cedric Mullins, the next to hit for the Orioles. He's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion. And he's in full speed. That one inside. And now 2 and 0. Oh, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. 2 and 0 to Cal. Here it comes. On the ground, right side. Fair ball. Henderson around third. He'll score, and it's now a two run game. The throw to second is offline. Nice job keeping it fair as he turned on it down the line, and once it got through the infield, it was a double all the way.
man in scoring position with two away. And next is the designated hitter, Adley Rutschman. First pitch doesn't find the zone. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit's probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. The tying run at the plate. And that's too high. Out to short. Toss the belt. Inning over, and it could have been worse. So it's two runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. It's the Blue Jays four and the Orioles two. Welcome back. Bottom of the eighth. And now for the Jays, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Vladimir Guerrero. Wells back to work. Pitch misses there. Ball one. Next offering is fouled back. That's in there. One and two. Smash to the left side. Henderson over to first in time. And Guerrero is set down. The first base is Brandon. Bell. Brandon Bell digs in now. He's already homered here in this one. Way outside. And that is ball one. Next offering is foul back. Nope. And a ball evens the count. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Got him swinging. Two outs, base is empty. Here's Matt Chapman. One for three. Matt Chapman. In there, and it's 0-1. 0-1. Oh and one. Chapman tries to hold up, appeal to first, didn't go. So now one and two. Been a solid inning so far in relief. Getting them through this inning only down two could give their lineup a real opportunity to just grind their way back into this game with the few outs that they have left. Got him looking. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Three up, three down that time. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Blue Jays four and the Orioles two. All set to start the ninth in this one. Now it's the right fielder, Anthony Santander. Santander. Romano. In his fourth year, 29 years old, and he was born in Canada. And a pitch. And downstairs. And now two and nothing. Here's a high chopper, Bichette. And the leadoff man yeah. retired here in the ninth. The first base is number six, Ryan Mountcastle. Ryan Mountcastle, the next to hit for the Orioles. Okay, so Jordan Romano 
a guy who never used cologne until a teammate gave him a bottle in 2021. He's been using it for games ever since. He rotates three colognes. Number one, feeling good. Number two, feeling dangerous. Number three, let's snap a losing streak. Sounds like he's got all the bases covered with that. The 0-1. Line drive, base hit. He's two outs away. Adam Frazier, the next to hit for the Orioles. Corner infielders guarding the lines, trying to prevent extra bases. Strike on the inside corner. It's 0-1. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. With two strikes. May see some movement over there at first base. Try to stay out of a double play here. That's off the mark. It's a ball and two strikes. 0-2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. At the belt and fires. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. And the slider just misses. Austin Hayes in the on deck circle. Tying run at the plate. And a ground ball to first. Down the line, and it's foul. Three, two. Got him looking. Two gone. Oh, man, just locked him up with that slider. Even though it caught a lot of the zone. And I think that tells you all you need to know about what he was looking for in the box. And it clearly was not that pitch. So they're down to their final out. Stepping in, Austin Hayes. And a foul ball. Right-handed reliever. They say you win. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, someone from the bullpen had to come in, get a big out, and then had a little time to think about it before he went back out to get the final three outs of this ball game. Nonetheless,